Hi, my name is John from Just Whiskey. And if you like today's show, please click like and subscribe and consider becoming a Patreon with the link in the description below. And remember, no matter how good it is or how much it costs, it's Just Whiskey, folks. I've really been looking forward to this show for quite some time. Uh, I'm just going to give a quick history of my journey into the Scotch world. Previous to the last three years, I was mostly a, an Irish whiskey drinker and bourbon. And the idea of Scotch, I mean, obviously I've tasted it and, and tried it over the years, but that medicinal, smoky, peaty thing um, just told my brain to, to stay away from it. Including, about three years ago, I went to a liquor store and there was a, a tasting of the Talis Talisca 10. And the gentleman said, would you like to try it? And I said, sure. And I... I smelled it and I tasted it and I drank it, drank it, <clears throat> and it turned me off. You know that <laughs> my mind said no. The the smoky, peaty, phenolic, medicinal notes. And I tried to be. You know, he 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 asked me what I thought of it, and I just said, "Well, I, it's really not for me. I don't think." Um, and he said, "Why?" And I just said, "Well, you know the the." It's just the smoky peatiness is just turning me off. Obviously, I've watched a lot of YouTube uh, reviewers online and um, over the years. And for the longest time, I, even when I watched Ralphie, I just stuck with the Irish reviews and the focus on the bourbon reviews. But then I, I kept hearing more and more and more about, you know, Ardbeg and Laphroaig and, and all the rest and Talisca. And so about three years ago, roughly, I bought a bottle of Ardbeg 10 and I bought a bottle of Laphroaig 10. And I tasted them both and the Laphroaig 10 Pop my cherry. <laughs> the light bulb went off and I and I got it. And the rest is history because since then um, my scotch journey has has exploded. Which brings us to today's review, which is La Chegg 10 versus Talisca 10. Just a, some brief uh, notes on it. Talisca 10 makes no mention of whether it's colored or chill filtered. Lechag 10 clearly states unchill filtered. It does on the label. It does not say anything about coloring. But if you go on the website Tobamori, Tobamori makes Lechag. And if you go onto the shop section, like if you were to buy a bottle. It does say on there that it's natural color and unchill filtered. Interesting. I don't know if the camera picks it up, but they're very close, almost identical in color. So we'll have to assume that Talisca probably chill filters. It is a Diageo product and they're known for, for chill filtration. But I doubt that there's coloring in it. And if there is, it, it, it's minimal in my opinion. And we're going to talk a little bit about Talisca first. And we're going to save the best for last. Hint, hint. <laughs> um, Talisca on their labels um, used to say, up until they're, re they're doing a rebranding right now, uh, they're going to be changing the packaging, their labeling, and the older bottlings and labeling clearly stated that they were the only distillery on the Isle of Skye. 
Now they've changed that to the oldest distillery on the Isle of Skye because in 2017, Torveig started distillering. And Lechag 10 is from the Isle of Mull. Okay. Talisca 10 on the nose. It has a very inviting nose. Definitely smoke, peat, slight medicinal. And a little bit of a musty incense, in my opinion. And on the nose. Yeah, we're going to get to the Lechag in a minute. But the nose in the Talisca 10 is a little more subdued compared to the Lechag 10. I'll even go as far as to say comparing it to Lechag 10, the nose on the Talisca 10 is slightly muted compared to the nose on the Lechag 10. Okay, the palate. It has a sweet... <clears throat> but slightly dry, sticky vis viscosity to it. But the legs on this compared to the Lechag 10 are not as pronounced. Also to just the ABV, I found it interesting that the Talisca 10 is 45.8% ABV. And the Lechag 10 is 46.3. The Talisca 10, I found to be a very complex dram. Um, almost every time that I try it, I pick up something different or it has a, di a different sensation to me. Not so much today, but in past tastings of this, and you can tell by the level of the bottle, I'm really enjoying this bottle. Um, I didn't think I was, I was going to like it at all, but it, uh, I definitely got the wow factor with the Talisca 10. I really enjoy this and I would highly recommend it. So back to the palette. Not so much today, but in the past I've picked up the cinnamon red hot candy notes on it. And even one time with this bottle, a little bit of that floor cleaner furniture polish and I'm like wow that was like that was interesting um, there's also no mention of PPM on the Talisca 10 the Lechag is a 30 to 40 PPM so the the finish on a Talisca 10 is a slightly dry, medium to long finish with, with that peppery bite. Definitely a complex dram. They, these both retail anywhere in the $50 to $60 range. And <clears throat> I read all the packaging. I'm not going to read everything now, but I did find it interesting on the, on the back of the Talisca 10 packaging. At the very end is a last sentence. It says, superb with smoked salmon and brown bread. So before I did this review, I got myself a can of B&M brown bread, sliced it up, and I had some smoked salmon with it. And by golly, they went well together. And it went well with the Lechag 10 as well. Um, so I, I, would, I would recommend that, definitely. They know what they're talking about on there. Okay, now we're going to go to the Lechag 10. And as we talked about earlier, Lechag <clears throat> is made by the Tobomori company. Tobomori is the non-peated version. Lechag 10... is also owned, well, Tobomori, is also owned 
by the same company that makes Deanston and Bunnehaven. And you'll see most of their um, core range releases are 46.3 ABV from the Isle of Mull, the Chake 10, natural color, unchill filtered. Definitely a more brighter nose compared to the Talisca 10. A more fruity nose as well. Every time I open up and pour myself a dram of the Chag 10, it brings a smile to my face. This is a lovely, complex dram that I highly recommend as well. And I think I mentioned it retails between the $50 and $60 range, same as Talisca, price-wise. On the nose, you get a heavy, phenolic smoke, peat, candied fruits, medicinal, and definitely a vegetal note. The PPMs are 30 to 40 PPMs on this. On the palate, beautiful viscosity, a little more than the Talisca 10. On the palate, you get the fruitiness, the mintiness, a slight jalapeno um, sensation, sweet with a medium to long sweet finish. Okay, now for a recap. I'd seen a lot of reviews on the Talisca 10 and knowing that it's probably chill filtered and there's no mention of color on here and from my experience three years ago, I, I had no expectations for it, but I was planning on maybe being disappointed by it. By no means am I disappointed in the Talisca 10. In fact, I really enjoy it, um, highly recommend it. And as far as the score, I thought, before I did this whole show, I really thought Le Chag 10 was going to blow it out of the water. Le Chag 10 still stands as my favorite peated scotch for the price. Score-wise, I'm going to give the Talisca 10 <clears throat> between a 90 and a 91. And I'm going to give the Lechag 10 between 91 and 93. And if you've seen some of my previous shows, I like to give a range because on any given day, your mood, your palate, um, and the level of oxidation in the bottles um, can bring a whole new sensation into it. Um, so I think that wraps it up. Le Chag 10 is the slight winner over Talisca 10. Um, and who knows, maybe if Talisca 10 did not chill filter it, maybe it would, it would bump it up a slight notch. Um, so thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe. Consider becoming a Patreon with the link in the description below. And remember, no matter how good it is or how much it costs, it's just whiskey, folks. So hats off to you all and take care.